Welcome back. My name is Levi from the Owl Revelations, our paper plane on Discord. And we're going to go ahead and start up on a new series. And we're going to create another landscape from scratch. But this time we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to use a few new plugins, a few uh, different ideas as well. Um, this one, we're actually going to start using a plugin that pretty much makes it limitless on what you can do as far as your size. And also, it's pretty much like using Gaia or World Creator right in Unreal. It's pretty amazing. I want to give a shout out to uh, the winners also from Oceanology. Uh, thank you so much for participating in that. That was amazing. I was really excited to give those away. And I'm um, definitely going to be looking forward to seeing some of the stuff you guys are doing on the Discord. So please, send in some stuff. Show us your work. I definitely want to see it. So now we're actually uh, going to hop into uh, Errant Worlds. The best part about this one is Errant Worlds has an amazing free trial that you guys can do. And you can get right now for 30 days. So you can actually try it out and you can build this stuff with us while we're doing it for the next few days. Or for the next few weeks, however long it takes to get this built. It's going to actually be quite a bit this time, so it's going to be a little bit longer videos probably. And probably quite a few more of them as well. Uh, but you can actually go over here. So we're actually on Errant Photon right here. This you'll find it is errantphoton.com. And you can go ahead and click on the free trial right here and set yourself up. Go ahead and what you're interested in, I would go ahead and just, I mean, if you're going to get the free trial, go ahead and get all three of them so you can play with them, put in your name, uh, your individual company, whatever you need there, and then go ahead and request access. And then you'll be uh, given a key through your email uh, for each one of these items. So each one of these does require its own key inside Unreal. And in the next video, we'll go through actually setting them up and getting them set up in installed into Unreal and getting the key set up and then starting to use them. So for right now, I'm just going to do a quick overview on how it works. And this is definitely where you can find it. So you can go ahead and play with it right now by, uh, you know, on your own and just mess with it and see what it looks like. You can also check out some of their videos so you can find their videos right here. And let's go ahead and move in right now in Unreal. So I already have Unreal set up and I already have my errant set up. And this is where you'll find your errant. So we have our errant biomes, errant landscape, and errant paths. And this is just the default scene that we have when we open up Unreal. And this is just a basic um, map, nothing fancy. This is also just a basic uh, game setup, nothing fancy as well. This is just the blank. Or, yeah, I think the blank comes with this one map at the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to go ahead and create a new level. And we're going to go to op uh, Empty Open World. And we'll go to Create. And I have installed a few plugins that we're going to be using for the new one. I'll go through all of those once we start getting to that. But for right now, we're just going to use our Ultra Dynamic Sky just so we can see what we're doing here. We'll go ahead and install that in. Whoops. Drop that in like so, and then we're going to go to our transforms and zero that out so it's in zero, zero, zero. And then we're just going to go ahead and make us a landscape. So we're going to do just the base landscape for right now. We'll just do a... We'll do a 127, 127 by 2 by 2 by 2 just to get uh, some area so we can actually see what's going on here. And we'll go ahead and create that. Very cool. So now we have a pretty good size landscape that we can play with a uh, little cheap trick you can do is you can actually grab the sky here let's go back into selection we'll go ahead and grab the ultra dynamic sky and we're just going to move that down so it's below the world completely and the only reason we did that is just to get rid of the fog on everything and to get rid of any shadowing that we might get from the um, clouds as well you can actually go in here and take them out manually but that's a lot longer than just dragging it down, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into my world position, uh, partition and just go ahead and drag everything and load it, just so we don't have that stupid loading thing in the bottom. And another few things we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull size zero. I already have added on to this one, and we're not going to mess with the tessellation right now. That's fine. I thought I had another one I need to mess with. That's perfect. Okay, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and set it up. So now we can go into our errant landscape. And we are going to be using the biomes, and we may even be using the errant paths. Uh, I'll have to see how far I go through. I'm, I'm new on that one, so I'm still getting through how all that functions currently. 
So we go into our errant landscapes and we're gonna go ahead and create new errant layer. So now if we go into our landscape and we go into our paint layer, you're gonna see we have two layers here. And one is our errant landscape, which is what we're gonna wanna put everything on. And then the other one is just our base layer, which we don't want anything there. So we're gonna add in to make this work uh, properly. We're going to go ahead, select our landscape, and we're going to just add in a standard. Uh, we'll add in the 40, uh, I think it was 4081. Yeah, there we go. 4081 landscape. And you're going to see it take a minute. And then there we go. And the only thing we're, the only thing we're going to use for right now on this one is we're just going to use the grass so that we can... Let me go ahead and... Yeah, that's fine. That's its own folder just so that we can see what's going on when we add in all of our mountains and stuff like that. So that's perfect. So now the only problem is, is that if we hide this one, you'll see that we still have the landscape uh, material here on this base layer. So we're actually gonna rename that. Let's go ahead and click rename. And we'll call this base. And we don't want that. We actually want to remove that. So if we click, uh, if we right click here, we can go to clear layer. Now we have no paint information on this particular layer. We want to move that to our errant landscape layer. So we're going to unlock that and have it selected. And then we're going to click, uh, right click on it and go to fill layer. Now that will be added into the errant landscape layer which is perfectly the way we need it. Now we can go ahead and just drop into the errant landscapes and we're ready. From there, we're, we can add everything that we need to add. So let's do that. Let's, uh, let's add, hmm. All right, we'll just go ahead and just start adding. So we have, um, oops. So if this happens, I don't have the library installed for this. So I am going to go ahead and I'll be back in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and get that installed because right now I have no brushes. So I forgot to do that. I'll be right back. And here we go. Now I have them installed. And if we go down here, we can actually see all of our brushes that I didn't have installed a moment ago. And the interesting thing about these brushes is that they are all 16-bit uh, height maps. So you can actually create your whole map that you want in Gaia and then export it out as a 16-bit uh, height map with all of its functions. So if we go into the uh, library that I added in, I can go into say any of them, it doesn't matter. We have all of these here. So all of these textures you can create in Gaia. You can have your slope textures, you can have your uh, mountain range textures, you can have foliage textures, runoff textures, all kinds of stuff. And you can import those as well. And they will function here in Errant. So for right now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select one that we want to use. I'm going to use one of the tiling ones right now. Uh, so we have uh, the range here. Uh, so small mountain is just a mountain on itself. But if you use range, you have a large range of mountains. But we're not going to use that. We're going to use one of the tileables. So if we go into the tiling, we have the tiling moon surface, tiling mountain range. That's the one we're going to use for right now. Tiling rocky mountains. There's all kinds of tiles here that you can actually set next to each other. And the way this works is on Brushfy, the one problem I always had with Brushfy and that I love about it is that it can, you can do this, but once you get to a certain amount of brushes, it actually takes over and slows you down. And you start having problems uh, keeping up as far as CPU and stuff like that. So the way these work is once we're in our editor here and we add them, then we are using them and we can function, you know, you can drag them around, move them, size them, everything. Once you get out of this, then it basically locks it to your landscape. Uh, I'm not going to go into details on exactly how that do, does that because I don't know, but <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of uh, captures in there that make that function. But it'll lock it in place. So the thing is, is that when you add one, let's go ahead and add one real quick. We'll do our, the one I was talking about a moment ago. We'll grab one of the tiling ones as tile. Uh, let's do tiling Rocky Mountains. Uh, I think that's, the, yeah, let's do tiling Rocky Mountains. Don't matter. So we'll go ahead and grab this one and we'll just click on the middle of the landscape here. And there we go. We got tiling Rocky Mountains, just like that, that easy. And from there we can select it up here and we have a select option. So if we click on select here 
and we grab it, then we'll get our transform uh, widget here where we can actually move it around and scale it. And this one almost fits perfect to my landscape that I built, but we can scale it out as well. And if we want this to be a little bit even more sparse, we can really scale it out. We can also scale it up and make it higher. And right now we're actually cutting because we are at the Z max for Unreal. So you can actually change this by going into the settings and you can change uh, where your Z max uh, height ends. Or we can actually go here into our settings. Uh, excuse me, we can go into the tools. We can go to change landscape max height. And we can actually change it here on this landscape. And we'll change it to say 250 and we'll hit confirm. And we just change the height there as well. And then we can go up and hit the other height max, which will be up there, which we really don't need it to be that high. So, cause I mean, these are actually pretty good size, uh, hills we got going on here. I don't think I have a character added, which yeah, I'm actually in the setup here. I got to go back to selected. Uh, it's going to take a minute once you go to selected so that it actually pretty much adds it to the landscape itself. And then, Oh, I do have my character, which I didn't want to show you yet, but that's fine. <laughs> So this will give you a little hint on the style we're going to be going for. And you can see the size that we have for these mountains. So this is not anything like what we're going to be doing on the new uh, videos. We're going to be going much more upscaled than this. But this will just give you an overview of how this works. So if we drop back out and we go back in to you want to be in your errant landscape. So if we actually grab, so you'll see we have the mountain here and if we grab it and we try to move it, we're going to get an error. Okay. And there's the error down the bottom, modifying errant landscape brush outside the editor mode. So basically we are moving it and as we're moving it, it's constantly trying to re add it to the landscape. Therefore it's going to be very slow and sluggish. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we're in errant landscape mode when we do that. And then we can very, very easily go ahead back in. And let's grab a few more. We'll do, uh, we'll do this one and we'll add this one in just like so. And let's add another one. Why not? And we'll add this one in on top and they play together very well. So if we go into our select and we grab one of them. So this is the hole that we just added. We can move that around and it will join in with the other brushes that we've added. And you can also go into your blend settings and change how it functions or impacts uh, everything around it. We can go and change the falloff size a little bit to get a little bit different functionality on that. You have your falloff noise as well. And we can use the add and subtracts, as I mentioned earlier, to add items in, add items out. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna delete that brush really quickly because um, I just had a crash, so I had to restart. Let me go ahead and go back to Cracked. Add that back in so it's in the right Z orientation, which you can change here as well, but I find it easier sometimes just to replace it. So we have our crack here. And of course you can uh, zoom, I mean, you can scale it however you want to scale it. You can even scale it it's Y only, make a nice big ravine type thing. And you can have pretty much uh, almost as many of these as you want. I mean, I'm sure there is a limit, but you can get a lot of stuff in there. And then once we go back out, we're going to be able to play around here and see what we have going on. So, I mean, very quickly, you can actually get a lot of your map done in the styles that you want. And like I said, you can go into Gaia and customize your own brushes as well, or even whole map regions and add those in as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the rocky crack. Just want to show you what that one looked like so that we get back to this uh, little basic setup that we have here with our little rocks and our little 
um, mountainy area. So you would, I would actually cover this with like an actual uh, mesh, something like that. I mean, most of these edges I would cover personally, but that's just me. But I mean, like you, you can see very quickly, we can get a very nice, very convincing landscape. Yes, we can actually go back in. I'm going to take out the tiling Rocky Mountain because we don't need it. We're going to just work here with the Icelandic terrain that we have here. And now we're going to add a few more features to it. So this one will work whenever we start doing the biome area. So if we are in selected and we have our Icelandic ter uh, terrain selected, we can actually go down here and we can add visibility mask to it. So we go here to our visibility mask and we set a texture. We can go in to our Icelandic. So this one is the Icelandic terrain. And we have all these textures here that we can use. And the one I'm going to use right this moment, I'm just going to throw on this Icelandic terrain flow. Go ahead and hit that on there real quick. So the visibility mask, you can see it actually cuts away parts of the world, which is not exactly what we're wanting to do right this minute. So we'll go ahead and take that back off. And we have our height map here. Oh, I'm so sorry. The one that I, I'm using the wrong one. So this is for the biomes mask. And we've are, we were setting this up and this is the way you would want it to be. But this is not where we need to adjust for the weights. I, I, we need to go to the weight maps and we need to add a weight map. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and do desert and we're going to open that one up. This is perfect. Okay. And then we can go into our textures. So we have the same thing here. Single layer texture. Uh, we're only going to be using single layer right now. So if we go to multi-layer then you can add layers as an array, which we're not going to do. We're just going to go to single and we'll go ahead and add that back in. And it's going to take a second. And now you can see we have the desert uh, layer added into the biomes. And I have the grass here right now, just because the way that this works, it kind of sets everything there and keeps it until you save it. Or you can go in uh, and also build up, build your grass maps, but you would still have to save it. So you're not going to see the change until that point. And right there, very quickly and very easily, we have a bunch of uh, setups here added for adding in certain biome areas. Now, we don't have to use this particular texture. This is just the one I got. We can actually go back in and grab something else. This is the deposit texture and you'll see we get a lot more area just like so so right now it's pretty much all of the higher areas are going to be grass and the lower areas will not we can go ahead and save that as well and then we can go down to see where we're going to have uh, grass on and stuff unfortunately none of these are very high um, on the desert weight so they're all going to have grass and you can actually go in and adjust in your adjustments you can go in and adjust your contrast so that you get more um uh nope not the contrast we're going to do this is going to be one and i believe it was the multiply yeah okay so the multiply is going to increase we'll just do this to two it'll just increase the weight that's added so right now you can see it didn't change where stuff is it just increased the weight in those areas. So if we go back down, you'll see on your edges, let's save so we can make sure that the grass goes away the way it should. So you'll see on your edges, you're going to see the grass coming in, but as you get in, your weight's going to get higher and then you're going to start losing the grass in your heavier areas. And unfortunately it's still not quite heavy enough. So let's go ahead to like a four. That'll make it really, really heavy. Control save that. That should work for us. Let's see if we got any grass and we do not. So now we are added to the actual desert type uh, grass. So we still have some up here just because this is in between grass and uh, desert. But down here, you'll see that we get back to only desert. And that's how we can add in those biome areas. You can also make custom masks. You can even use, and I do all the time. I can use something like a cloud mask or even a noise. Let's do cloud. Whoops, there's no E on cloud. And the one I like to use the most is I like the cloud diverse and particle cloud. 
So this one definitely works and we can, so right now it's just uh, that texture is pretty much taking up this whole landscape. So we're not getting a whole lot, but we can adjust the tiling size of it as well. So if we go into, let's go ahead and bring the, um, was it offset? No. Ah, yes, our sampling. There it is. I <laughs> couldn't find it. So we can go ahead and bring in uh, a different UV scale on this, and this is going to be probably like a 6 or 10 will look pretty good. Actually, let's go to like a 10. Just get little small patches here and there. And then we can use our uh, scales that we were working with down here to decrease or increase that. So we have our contrast coming out like so. And we can just bring this down so it spreads out just a little bit more. Like that. And there you go. So now we have a whole bunch of little spots with... Uh, let's go ahead and save it real quick. A whole bunch of spots with um, the rocky desert area and then grass next to it. Now, obviously, I probably wouldn't do it like this with these particular textures, but this will just... This is really easy to see, so you can see the differences. So I would do this with like forests and stuff like that, or grassy areas where I don't want trees. Uh, and then I can have little holes here and there. So that works perfect. You can also do offsets uh, with Z, and you can do a lot of other offsets. I don't really play with those a whole lot yet. I'm still getting my head around all of those. But this will definitely get you started on how to function with all this and how to get this working and get it into your game. And like I said, right now it's free for 30 days. So, I mean, it's worth trying it and just seeing what it looks like and seeing if it helps you out or not, or if it makes your uh, journey for making a game just that much faster. That's pretty much what I'm looking for. Just not spending a whole lot of time in other programs, trying to create something that I can spend more time working on the storyline and working on getting the functionality I want in my game instead of building worlds. Uh, even though <laughs> building worlds is one of my favorite parts. So <laughs> I constantly do it over and over and over again. But this can definitely help you out if you're interested in taking a look at it. And in the next one, we're actually going to build out the level with this. We're going to build a whole uh, landscape with water, oceans, everything uh, in a little bit different style. We're going to go from beginning on the end on that, and we're going to do a much larger level. So this is just, this one's not really all that big. Uh, we're going to try and really maximize to get the largest size. So far, the biggest I've got with this is uh, 1,024 square kilometers, which is absurdly large. I mean, if you're flying around, it's great, but if you're just walking or riding even on horses and stuff, that's still way too too much landscape. So uh, yeah, on the next one, we'll go ahead and start on that. And also you can check out the Hyper video that I'm putting out as well. So we're going to be using Hyper uh, Games by Hyper Assets as well in this and kind of showcasing how those work a little bit. And we have uh, several other plugins we're going to go to go through also and a few assets that we're going to be using as well. Some of them are from the free month, uh, the monthly free marketplace right now. So you can go ahead and grab those and you'll have the same assets I have. Some of them are not, some of them are paid, uh, but We'll go through all of them and you don't need any of the paid ones. You can do this with whatever you want. It's just, those are the ones that I opted to use just to kind of keep the cohesive of, of the style that I'm going to be doing it. So it's all kind of the same. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to call it on this one and uh, we'll get back on it here shortly with the new videos and this new series. And for now, I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>